Hey, what's up? This is gonna be the last video in the series for the tutorial shit that I've been doing. Today we're gonna do abs and calves. I know what you're thinking. Why am I gonna watch a video about calves from a dude with no calves? Uh, anyways, so the standing calf phrase is going to be your go-to machine as a beginner to get like get your calves like juicy, as juicy as you can. Um, and to demonstrate this exercise, my good, my good friend, Huckleberry Finn, will show you. Uh, I, I mean, I technically I guess you could do that. I don't, I don't see a problem with it. So essentially, all calf movements are going to be the same. Um, when when you contract, you you want to focus. Let's so say like this is your foot, right? When you contract, you want to put you want the point of focus to be on your big toe. So yeah, you can come up straight, but if you come up slightly more leaning towards your big toe, you will have a better contraction on your calf. And so a lot of these machines are the, about the same. This one's a little different because like you, if you can, you want to do calves without your shoes on or like with a flat, flat shoe like Converse. Uh, this one fucking hurts on if you try that. This one's just weird. So I'll demonstrate the movement. Okay, so essentially you want this height to be at a point where at the bottom of the movement you still have space between the plates. That way you're still getting a stretch on your calves. Because if you don't have space on your plates and it looks like this at the bottom of the movement uh, you're not getting as deep of a stretch in the muscle, therefore you're not getting as an effective of a contraction. So I'll show you. You see at the bottom of the movement, there's still a gap between the plates. There's still, so there's tension in my, there's tension in my uh, calves. So you see, I can, if I was going up straight, it would look like this. But since I'm going up with my big toe, it looks like this. So with calves, typically, because it's a smaller muscle, you want to have a higher rep range, probably around like 15 to 20. Calves is one of those muscles that you can do a shit ton of weight on, but if you're not getting that full contraction, uh, they won't grow. So a lot of people will also, you'll see this a lot, you'll see like this, which is not cool, or you show just people like bouncing it. Uh, typically just with everything else, you want a smooth movement, not jerky, and a full contraction. And that'll give you the best results for calves, even though I have none. Another good move, good. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Another good movement is using a leg press. You can either use the hack squat or leg machine, I'd say. You can use the hack squat or the leg press. The movement is the same. Uh, and it'd be, it's essentially the same movement as the calf, calf machine raise. So yeah, you sit. <laughs> You get your stance right. You go all the way down with your contraction. And then all the way up. Very smooth and controlled. Nothing jerky. It's essentially the same movement, just at a different angle because of the machine. Alright, so for calves, you see a lot of people doing this, this movement a lot. They either get a the rope, attachment or they'll get uh, one of these one of these attachments uh, and 
and they get on the floor and they do the abs with it. Um, I have my great, amazing, wonderful, wow friend. I don't even remember his name. I'm gonna let him show you. That was, that was terrible. So you wanna get a good, moderate weight. You wanna have your knees together here. You don't wanna be too, too spread out like this. Uh, you'll get a better contraction with your knees together. And a lot of people do this movement and don't feel it in their calves. I mean abs. <laughs> uh, that's because they are moving too fast and not focusing on the contraction. <clears throat> so, at the top of the movement up here, you want to make sure you are stretching out your, your abs here. So you're here, because if you're just like this, uh, you won't feel it. So make sure your abs are stretched out. And when you come down, uh, you want to try to touch the floor with your elbows. So like this. And you come back up, stretch out your abs, come back down, try to touch the floor. Same dealio. Uh, that's really the key into really feeling this movement and it's a really good movement. You can also use this movement for obliques. The difference is, instead of coming straight down like this, you're coming to the side like this. And it's easier for you to just align your body with the machine rather than force it on that side. So now my waist is diagonal to the machine and the movement stays the same at the top you stretch out your abs, and at the bottom, you try to touch the floor with your elbows. It's the same thing. And then you would switch sides, so you would, after your sets, you would be like this for the next side. And then you can also get a mat for your knees, because this shit fucking hurts. Hey, you like this shirt? Of course you do, you want one? Of course you do. Click that, give me your money, and it's yours. It's that easy. Limited time offer, not available in stores. Beware of imitators. May cause heart attack, stroke, and death. Use with caution. The declining bench should be your go-to exercise for abs. Uh, if you can't, if you can't do it at a complete decline, or as far as that machine goes, uh, you can just set it level. Doesn't matter. The movement is the same. And the cool thing about it is you can like add weight to it. So there's two slightly different movements here. Just make sure your legs are pinned well so you don't fall off. And then everyone laughs at you and then you go home crying like that happened to me one time. I mean, not really. I mean, it kind of did, possibly. <laughs> so you can have your arms here when you do the movement. So you can do this. Uh, it's a lot easier to do that one. Or if you have your arms back here, uh, it has more, provides more resistance like that. So this is easier, this is harder. Also, when you come up, so when you come up, what's a good? <laughs> so when you come up, you can keep your torso straight, so you can come up like that. Or you can kind of like bend in. Uh, they, if you keep your torso straight, you'll work more of your lower. So I'll show you. So you can either do your movement like this, or like this. It's still your abs, just one focuses on your lower abs and the other one focuses on your upper. And also you can add weight to it, so you'll be at the bottom of the movement you have your weight up. And you can use this with a dumbbell, doesn't really matter. Uh, I know what you're thinking, why am I listening to a fat guy telling me about working out abs? I, uh, this machine will help you focus on your lower abs and there's two movements you can do here. You can 
you can keep your legs straight when you come up or you can bend them like this. Uh, bending is easier than going straight up. Uh, for this movement, you don't want like your back to come off. You don't want to do this. I mean, I guess you could, but you want to have your back flat on the mat and have a slow controlled movement. To make it even harder on you, or like to have more resistance in this movement, you can come up high enough to where your butt comes up, comes off the mat. So you come up here, and then your butt just comes off, but not your back. And that'll give you more resistance in this movement. Uh, this next oblique exercise, I really like. Some people don't, because they, they're like, hey, it'll give you a thicker waist. I don't think that's true. I think it's more genetic. Plus I'm fat. I'm have a thick waist anyway, so I mean, who the fuck am I helping? Probably edit that out. Or not. Just keep it in. I don't know. <laughs> to demonstrate this movement, my great, amazing god of gods friend, Cletus, will show you this movement. So you can do this with either a dumbbell or the cable here. Uh, I alternate between the two. I wouldn't say one is better than the other. So if you're using the dumbbell, kind of just have it at your side. You kind of want like an anchor point with your other hand. And it's literally, the movement is just this, honestly. You should feel like all this shit contracting. And so of course you would do, because it's abs, probably like 15 reps, and then you would alternate side. You can do the same exact thing uh, with the cable. You would have it here. So now this is my right side. Uh, because you can't really do anything with this hand, I don't know what to do with my hands. Uh, you could just put your hand here. It'll give you actually better stability for this movement. And you just, you don't get too far from it because then the contraction just doesn't work well. You want to get a, as close as you can to it to where it's not resting on the machine. So you're about at this range and you just do that. Same movement. And that's it for abs and calves. So next week I'll do a video kind of because I really talk about cardio in these training tutorials. I'll do a video about cardio and training frequency and should you do cardio before training or should you do the opposite and how often should you do cardio. Just like all these extra little things I didn't really cover in my training videos. After that, I'll do some nutrition stuff, again for beginners. After that, I went camping a long time ago. I did a camping video. It's pretty cool. I could have planned it a little better, but you know, I'm still learning the game. After that, I, I have no idea. I, I don't know. I don't. Maybe I'll have Ferrari by then and just quit YouTube. I mean, that's I think, I think that should work out, right? I think so.